So Galaxy Zoo started when I was a graduate student. I was trying to understand the evolution of galaxies, and in particular how the fundamental types of galaxies transform from one type to another. And so I wanted to find those rare galaxies that don't quite fit into the, the big types, like the spiral galaxies like our Milky Way. And so I sorted through galaxies by myself. I, I looked at the images and I classified them, and this was very interesting. But the universe is big, there's a lot of galaxies. And so one night in the pub, we decided let's take all those galaxy images and put them on the internet. And let's ask people for help in analyzing and classifying those galaxies. Now, we vastly underestimated how many people would want to do this because once we launched the website, it almost immediately died because so many people logged on that a server in the US where the images were located uh, died because a, a cable physically melted. So we learned from this and so we put the server back online and over the next uh, few years we collected more than 70 classifications each from citizen scientists, so people uh, from the general public who looked at those galaxies for about a million galaxies and so we could do amazing science. Now, this was interesting, we could go analyze these very, very large astronomical data sets, but what doing citizen science with astronomy also allowed us to do was to make use of this uniquely human ability to go spot the unusual, to make discoveries. And so we built an online community and a message forum where the citizen scientists could talk to each other and start their own projects. And they made all sorts of fascinating discoveries. They found a type of galaxy which they called the green peas because they were small, round and green. And they started a thread called Give Peas a Chance. They like puns. And we now understand that these green pea galaxies are, are really living fossils in the galaxy zoo. They're more like galaxies in the early universe than they're like galaxies that are evolved and old like our own Milky Way. And of course, the most spectacular, you know, we didn't know it was their discovery, is an object called Hannes Vorwerp. So a Dutch school teacher by the name of Hannes van Arkel discovered this bluish purple splotch cloud next to a massive galaxy. And it was named after her first Hani's object, and then in Dutch, Hani's Vorwerp. And we now understand that this Vorwerp is the ionization echo, the past outburst of a supermassive black hole. And so this Vorwerp is now teaching us amazing things about how supermassive black holes work and how they interact with their host galaxies. <laughs> so Galaxy Zoo has really helped us understand the universe better. Citizen scientists have helped us understand how galaxies work. And now as we look forward into the future, we think about what the next level of citizen science is going to be because if you have a million galaxies, you can find friends on the internet to help you classify a million. What are you gonna do if you have a billion? So that's what we're thinking about now. We're trying to think of clever ways in which we can help uh, the machines, the intelligent machines, to classify those billion galaxies. And the way we're doing that is we're having the humans, the citizen scientists, train the machines. And so we're going to have this, this symbiosis. And uh, we, we start calling this the citizen science cyborg. So they're half human, half machine.